angel that came to Zechariah, the angel that came to Mary, and the angel that came to Joseph. We're going to move out on the hillside this morning, and I want you to put your imagination into gear. Imagine that you were out on the hillside one evening and that you were a shepherd. And something miraculous happens. An angel comes. How would you feel and how would you respond to that? Luke chapter 2, verse 8 through 15, and I'm just going to highlight this. There's some, I've done a lot of research this week and last week about this message, and I hope you'll bear with me. That night, shepherds were staying in the field nearby, guarding their flock of sheep. What night? The night Jesus was born. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiant of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. You remember back in the temple, Zechariah was afraid. You remember Mary was afraid. You remember Joseph was afraid. I'm here to tell you, if an angel came into your bedroom at night, you would be afraid to. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. He said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior. Yes, the Messiah. The Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Now, what a sign that is. Here's a sign that you'll find when you get to the manger. There's a baby wrapped in cloth. That's your sign. That's not a very big sign, is it? But I'm just giving you what the scripture says. Suddenly, to show the importance of the event, as if God says, okay, guys, I want to shock you a little more. Suddenly, the angel was joined with a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. When the angel had returned to heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let's go to Bethlehem and see what happened, which the Lord has told us about. Now, you see the terminology of the shepherds. What, let's go to Bethlehem and, and see what's happened, uh, which the Lord or which the angel had said to them. But they said, which the Lord has given to us. All messages come from the Lord. I want to talk about three things this morning. First of all, we're going to look at the shepherds and the sheep, and then we're going to see our blessed Savior. This story takes place just outside of the city limits of Bethlehem, not far from Jerusalem. Um, you probably could walk to either place within hours. Um, so again, this week, we're going to look at the miracle and the message, or the message and the miracle that we have been talking about through this whole Christmas episodes. And we're going to go to the hillside that I asked you to step out on a while ago and look at the shepherds. <clears throat> it's a curious thing that of all the professions that God could have made the first announcement of Jesus Christ, his son, he chose the shepherds. Much has been made about the shepherds and that they were the lowest in society wrongs because they lived out in the fields, out in the pastures. That they were poor and dirty 
Well, I'm telling you right now, that's not altogether true. Because the shepherds were very wealthy people. You may, have not know, you may not know that, but they were. You know why? What was the main industry of that day? Sheep herding. And what went on during the Passover week? The slaughtering of the lambs. And so this group of shepherds had taken their sheep away from the foal. Now the foal is a corral of rock wall with just one entrance to it. And the shepherds would lay down in that entrance at night and take care and watch after the sheep. But here they are out on the hillside away from the fold. And there were several of them guarding the sheep by night. They would take turns walking around the flock, being sure. And the reason they were there, they were within reach of Jerusalem. Now, the law says that you couldn't keep animals within the terrain of Jerusalem, especially within so many miles of the temple. I read somewhere yes, this week, and, and I want you to bear with me. I don't have any scriptural proof that this actually happened. But one job of the priest, or the priest in the temple, was taking care of sheep. So someone said that the shepherds were just simply night priests watching the flock. And I read that, and I thought, well, there's no scripture to prove that. But someone wrote this, and I'm going to give it to you, and you can take it for what it's worth. The shepherds we read about in Luke were priests fulfilling temple duties, and the only ones who could perform temple duties were priests. Why would priests perform manual task of shepherding? That was their duty for temple worship. It became, it's because sheep were intended to be sacrificed for the Passover. It was priest's job to make sure the lambs were without spot or blemish. You couldn't take a crippled sheep to the temple to be sacrificed for the sins of people. Now, whether the shepherds were actually priests or not, don't go away saying, well, Brother Darrell said they were. No, I didn't. I'm just giving you what somebody else shared with me by reading. But we do think that the shepherds most likely were employed by the temple. Those who were in charge of the temple. I was thinking about the lambs, thinking about the sacrifice that had to be made. And then I made the paralleling thoughts. Here are these little lambs were about to be going to the slaughter for the sacrifice of sins when the Lamb of God was lying in a manger in Bethlehem. Because the scripture teaches us that he would become the lamb slain from the foundation of the world for the sins of all people. It, I think it's unique whether some of these thoughts are correct or not. And I'm not going to preach a false doctrine. I'll tell you right up front. I don't have any scripture proof for this. But if it's true, I think it's quite unique that here the, the lamb of God is lying in a manger and the little sheep, lambs out on the hillside were about to be taken to the temple to be sacrificed for the sins of the people. Now, <clears throat> someone wrote that most likely it was lambing season. And that's the reason they were without side the gate because it took a lamb, not a sheep, not a, not a grown sheep, but a little baby sheep, lamb. 
And here they were having the lamb. The sheep were having their lambs out on the hillside with the shepherds taking care of them. So they would have access to the temple. So my point is the shepherds weren't poor little shepherds. They made money. Amen? Now, it's, you can't help but think about the sheep time of the year that the lambs were being born. The Passover lamb was the animal God directed the Israelites to use as a sacrifice in Egypt. On the night, God struck down the first sons of every household. Jesus became the Passover lamb. John the Baptist recognizing him, looking up after he's baptizing people, and here came Jesus, and he said, Behold the lamb of God. Peter linked the lamb without defect with Christ when he called a lamb of God without blemish or defect. In Revelation, John the Apostle sees Jesus as the lamb of God looking as if he had been slain. We know he was. It's no, noteworthy to think that Jesus was crucified during the week of Passover. Think about that. Here he was being born during Passover, during the, the, the slaughtering of the lambs for the sin of the world. And you go down 30 and a half years, down the way, 33 and a half years, which is it? And there he is hanging on the cross. It was during Passover. There's connections somewhere that God had a plan. And the message is, I am the lamb slain from the foundation of the world for your sins. The angel said to the shepherd, don't be afraid. I bring you good news. You know what the word gospel means? Good news. I bring you the gospel is what he was saying. The Messiah is born in Bethlehem. Now the shepherds were within reach of Jerusalem to take their lambs, but they're also within reach of Bethlehem. And there's something mysterious about this message that the angel had for them, and it seemed like a misdirection. The misdirection was the shepherds were to go to Jerusalem to worship. The angel said, no, 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 you, you need to go to Bethlehem. But, but, but the, the temple is in Jerusalem, but the Savior is in Bethlehem. <laughs> Have you ever heard the term that the shepherds gave I think the, new, or the King James says it. You're to take, go to the city of Bethlehem, to the city of David. All throughout the New Testament, the city of David was known as Jerusalem. But here the angel said, you're to go to the city of David. Well, there's more than one city called the city of David. And here's Bethlehem. Luke 2, 12 says, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. It's important to understand that. Jesus had the reference, or the angels had the reference of the city of David, not to Jerusalem, but to Bethlehem. There you are sitting out on the hillside, talking, sharing stories about your day. You're watching the sheep knowing that the next day you'd have to take so many lambs into the city to be sacrificed. Thousands of thoughts are going through your life, throughout your thinking pattern, and suddenly the skies open up and an angel comes down. I'm not sure that I've ever seen an angel, 
And I don't know anybody that has ever seen an angel other than in the Old Testament. I've had messages from God before it could have been an angel. I will not say it was, but I do know it was from God. Gabriel is the angel of message. Suddenly the angel appears and gives them an unexpected message. The radiance of the glory of the Lord was all around them. No need of moon or stars. God's glory was there. The presence of Almighty God. It was such a realistic thing that the shepherds were terrified. The angel said, you don't need to be afraid. As if to say, hey guys, God's in charge of this. You don't need to worry about it. That's what he says to us many times. God is in charge. I bring you good news. There's the gospel again. That will bring great joy to everybody. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord. He has been born today in the city of Bethlehem, the city of David. They could have loaded up and gone to Jerusalem and ask around, where's the baby that's born here? And there might have been a baby born in Jerusalem that night. We don't know. But we do know there was one born in Bethlehem. So like the lambs born to the shepherds, Jesus, the Lamb of God, was born in the same place in Bethlehem where the lambs for the temple were born. It's quite interesting to me. You're still out there listening to the angel and as if God wanted to make an exclamation point behind what the angel Gabriel had said, and I think it was Gabriel because he's the angel of message. All of a sudden, the sky was filled full of heavenly beings. One translation said it was God's heavenly army. I don't know, my mind does not grasp hold of that. Would it have been a hundred extra angels that the shepherds saw that night? A host, a host. I don't know how many's in a host. If you figure that out, let me know. But I'd like to think that there were thousands and thousands of heavenly angels that have come to celebrate the birthday of their Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Son of God. And we're here to magnify God and lift him up with praise. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth. So we've seen, we've seen today the shepherds. We've seen the sheep. And now I want us to see the Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Luke chapter 2, verse 6 and through 7 says, And while they, Joseph and Mary, were there in Bethlehem, the time came for the baby to be born. They couldn't find room in an inn. And so finally someone said, Well, I know where you can stay. It's dry. It's not clean, but it's dry. You can, and you can find warmth. You can, we'll do the best we can to help you. So they found a stable. Our wonderful God gift to us at Christmas time, Jesus Christ was born that night. So far, there has not been any hallelujahs. There has not been any shouting. But as far as we know, Joseph and Mary were there by themselves. Maybe the innkeeper's wife may have been there. We don't know. But the scripture doesn't tell us that. She gave birth to her firstborn son. Mary, the virgin, gave birth not to Joseph's child, but to the Son of God himself.
And he said, you'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, cloths. The angel's message is, go to Jerusalem, and this is how you will know where he is. There'll be a big light sign over the, over the, over the place where he is that says, here is the Son of God. He's been, he is born tonight. No, there's no sign. There's no a microphone that's going out across the land. Behold, the Savior is born right here tonight. No, you didn't hear that. The angel said to the shepherds, you'll find Mary and Joseph and the baby wrapped in swaddling cloths. Let me give you something else that I found and I read and I thought was interesting, but I have no proof of it. You say, well, Brother Darrell, why are you preaching? Because it sounds good. I mean, come on. It could have been this way. I found this, and I thought it was very interesting, and I want to share it with you about the swaddling clothes. <clears throat> this will be a sign unto you. You'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. What's so special about swaddling clothes? We call them receiving blankets, don't we, honey? I mean, isn't that, isn't that what we call them? Receiving blankets. There weren't rags Mary and Joseph brought from home or weren't rags that they happened to find in the stable. They were, and I'm giving you what somebody's interpreted, the same clause used by the church specifically the shepherd's priest to keep the lambs clean and free from blemish of the lamb until they were prepared for sacrifice. How Mary and Joseph got those claws is a mystery. But some theologians speculate that they were from the priest Zacharias wife, Elizabeth who is Mary's cousin. Remember, Mary stayed in their home for three months. And the speculation is that when Mary left to go back to, to home to Nazareth, where Joseph was, that Elizabeth gave her a baby gift of material that her husband had used in the temple. Boy, I've got your attention now, though. It could have been that way. Because the angel said to the shepherds, you'll find the baby, and this will be a sign unto you. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. We don't know where it came from, but I like the theory that they came from Elizabeth, and they came from the temple where Zechariah had been in the presence of God. And now here is Mary, had her baby, and she wrapped him in these claws. So the shepherds found Jesus right where the angel said, you know where you'll find God? Within your heart, he's available to us. I don't know how far it was that they traveled, maybe 10 or 15 miles but they knew they weren't going to Jerusalem to take a lamb. Now, whether they took a lamb with them to, the, to visit Jesus, I don't know. And when they came in, they worshiped and then departed to tell others. I thought about the song this morning, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Don't you think those shepherds left there with joy in their hearts, not afraid anymore because they had witnessed the very presence of God that hovered over a manger where the born, the Son of God was born and the glory of God was everywhere. This is a message of Christmas for you. There is a miracle at Christmas time. For all of us, there's a message at Christmas time for all of us. And it boils down to this 
Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. The shepherds caught on pretty quick. Have you caught on that Jesus died for you as the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world? Regardless of of the theories that have, I've given you this morning, that's all they are. We don't know. The scripture doesn't say. It sounds good. But have you found him like the shepherds did on that night many, many years ago in Bethlehem's manger? The, the Lamb of God laid there. And many years later, the Lamb of God hung on a cross for your sins and my sins. He's no longer a baby, but there he is for us. That's the message of Christmas. And you might say from a cradle to the cross is the message. Let's stand together.